Welcome to Rogue Trader. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. So I'm giving an update on GameSys Group, who I last looked at back in April. And if you see on the link here, there you can see the full video I did on GameSys. So in brief, they are an online gambling company and they target the female and smartphone markets in an otherwise saturated gambling market. They are a great play on worldwide smartphone obsession and 74% of their revenues come from mobile. They produce a mixture of casino games, jackpot slot machine type uh, games for desktops and also uh, various games designed for use on the smartphone. And in 2020, their Q1 update confirmed that they got a 19% boost in revenues from the Corona crisis. So looking back five years, they actually joined the FTSE in uh, 2017 as Jackpot Joy PLC um, when the then Canadian company listed there. They refinanced some debt at the end of 2017 and in early 2019, spun off their Mandalay business to 888 Holdings. They then got a 196 million long-term loan facility and then used this to acquire GameSys. And this then produced a company overall that actually owned its gaming engines as well as doing all the sales. That was a combination that made quite a lot of sense, um, but they took on loads of debt, half a billion actually, to achieve that. Then we had the corona crash, but in the Q1, around the time I did the initial initial video, they had their Q1 sales up 19% as a result of the corona crisis. Now, since I did that initial video, they've actually gone up about 50%. So you can see how their, their performance here compared with the FTSE 250. And they've had two news items since I did that video, their half year results and then their Q3 update. And they've announced that they are now going to start paying dividends, which will be around 1%. So looking at their half year results, so looking at their half year results, and their gaming revenue was up 101% if you account for before the acquisition of GameSys. Um, and it was up 27% pro forma. They announced that they're now paying dividends of 1% and they're getting fairly cash rich. And their uh, UK revenues were up 16%. So UK is now 58% overall. And their Asia revenues were up 92%. So it's quite impressive to see them wildly expanding in Asia. Their number of active players was up 14% year on year. And their net leverage ratio was down from uh, 2.8 to 2.3. Well, I noticed that although their gaming revenue has doubled, their costs and expenses have doubled as well. And looking at the numbers here in their H1 reports, we can see yeah, the ga their gaming revenue has doubled, but their costs and expenses have doubled. However, they've actually quadrupled their net income in six months period um, up to uh, about 27 million. So it's like this bigger scale, they managed to eke out um, much higher net income overall. But it was still slightly disappointing to see a straight doubling of costs. So they look good for about 80 million in operating profit and 23 million in net income. And uh, that would that would then um, equate to probably 160 million and say 40 million in net income at the end of the year. So they have managed to achieve this fantastic growth that was that was the risk factor before that was supposed to come out of the combination. So looking at their Q3 updates, 
and there isn't actually that much information there but they say that their total revenues are up 31 percent so we see the same trajectory of increased sales and they do look on target to meet the analyst estimates they have been quite successful increasing their income we know the expenditures up has doubled as well but um but overall they do look like they're going to meet the uh, template that they promised and then when we look at their assets and debt it's actually fairly similar as it was before only there's a bit more cash you know they're starting to get a bit more cash coming in but they are half a billion in debt and it will be a fairly slow process i think to pay down this debt even with these fantastic revenues so i'm going to take a look at the valuation metrics that are available on the london stock exchange website and we see that for price to earnings they're actually pretty expensive when i compare them against 888 holdings for enterprise value to a bit uh, they are roughly the same as 888 holdings and this and the same also for price to sales when we look at price to book they are actually um a lot cheaper than 888 holdings but i think that's a reflection of their infrastructure is you know they have a lot less uh, kind of physical assets than 888 holdings by the nature of their business so overall they're kind of um nothing too bad but nothing too amazing either it's just that their price to earnings they, they look quite expensive there so overall i find that gamesys are a kind of a very enticing stock because because of their great play on this um, mobile phone addiction phenomenon that does make them very enticing to me plus the the fact that they are expanding massively in asia as we see here they still have this problem of the half a billion, billion in debt and then also we're relying on these amazing sales to continue to justify their share price and then their share price has gone up 50 percent since i looked at them it would definitely have been an amazing time to buy them back in april you'd be um, quite comfortable but given that rise overall there i look at them as a real enticing stock but they've got a kind of i'd say medium risk high reward profile and they're perhaps a little too fizzy for me i'm going to compare them with some other stocks in my shortlist particularly cranswick um, and also hikma pharmaceuticals i will be buying a, a defensive stock in um, the, before the end of this year and um, they're definitely still got their hat in the ring they're very enticing but like i say they they seem to be uh, medium risk high reward and they're probably not suited for all tastes